Today we're talking about George Orwell's classic novel Animal Farm, discover our unfair advantages, and I will talk about the best book I've read so far this year. Hi, my name is Nicholas, and my goal for this year was to read and review 100 books so that you know what to read next. Let's continue with book number 31. Animal Farm by George Orwell. Pretty much anything that could be said about Animal Farm has been said. It's that much of a classic. The story of a group of overworked and mistreated animals taking over a farm became a symbol of resistance, human greed and the cry for freedom. Published in 1945, it was seen as a metaphor for Stalin's Russia, but over time became so timeless they could be seen as relevant whenever freedom is attacked, under whatever banner and people rise up to stand their grounds. It's a book about animals symbolizing human behavior under suppression, and the similarities are shocking at times. You feel like you've seen it all before, happening in our real world over and over again. The evil overlords trying to rule over a mass of disempowered people, the resistance and uprising of these people, the hope of change, only for nothing to change in the end at all and the cycle starting again. Animal Farm can make you hopeless at times, as it's just so real in its depiction of our real world, even 77 years after its first publication. It just goes to show that mankind won't change and that can be a distressing thought. I will give it 4 stars, which does not represent the importance of the book per se, but rather how I felt about it emotionally after having read a few books in my life now. You could criticize, for example, that the book's symbolism is not very subtle, that it feels a bit like the kids' version of Orwell's other dystopian novel 1984. It's also a grim view of the world, one that you have to want to be confronted with. The criticism aside, it's a concise and very well-written book, meaning the barrier of entry is low and therefore it's one that you should read at least once in your lifetime, as its message and meaning are and will unfortunately always be relevant, I think. Models by Mark Manson Mark Manson is mostly known for his best-selling book The Subtle Art of Not Giving a which you most likely have heard of before. He already was a prominent voice in the self-help genre before the book though, as for years he had been writing blog posts in which he gave, and I quote, life advice that doesn't suck. As you can see, he's a very straightforward dude that in my mind has a brilliant YouTube channel worth checking out. His 10 minute essays truly are full of genuinely good takeaways and food for thought. Also, he was one of my many inspirations in how I wanted to lay out and position my channel, as I too would love to give life advice that doesn't suck. Models is Manson's first book, published in 2011, and a bit of a hot topic as it's all about attracting women. Now, some of you might remember a time where so-called pickup artists were a thing. In the early 2010s, this was a group of people who thought they could pick up women with simple pickup routines and magic tricks, seeing dating as a pure numbers game. And honestly, I was therefore a bit skeptical of the brilliant reviews that Models got, as Manson's outspoken attitude and the title of the book immediately suggested that it might fall into the same chauvinistic category of pickup books. Luckily, it turned out to be quite the opposite. Whereas the so-called pickup artists of the time tried to fool women into being attracted to them by creating false characters around them or studying certain routines with the fine lines they had to say, this book goes the total opposite way and pledges for full honesty and vulnerability. And even though this book is clearly tailored towards and written for straight cis men, already in the prologue the author explains how he intended the book to be more inclusive of all forms of gender identity. It's still predominantly written from the perspective of a straight man in search of a female partner, but the takeaways and underlying principles do work for all genders and sexual orientations, I think. I would even go as far as to say that the techniques and principles that Manson explains go even beyond dating and could be applied to a whole bunch of social settings. This book gets four and a half stars from me. I was close to giving models the full five stars, as it's a sharply written manual based on life principles that I can stand behind, honesty and vulnerability. It doesn't feed you bullshit, it's straight to the point and has generally good life advice. On the flip side, it can fall into the trap of being too generalizing of a whole group of people, which is a tricky subject and even trickier to circumvent in a book about dating this whole group of people. But overall, Manson's approach is refreshing and modern, basically actual life advice that doesn't suck. I've left a link to this book in the description below for you. 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf this is a rather quirky little book. Helene Hanf was an American writer in 1950s New York, writing and editing scripts for television shows. She was also a very educated woman and loved reading, and there was only one bookshop named Marks & Co, based in 84 Charing Cross Road, London, that seemed to have all the obscure novels and editions she was looking for. As London was across the pond from where Helene lived, they had to have correspondence via good old written letters, as it was the standard in the 1950s. The book then shows this correspondence that these two parties had over the years how she became intimately involved in the lives of the shop staff and how she continued to open up her own personal life to the Marks & Co crew. 84 Charing Cross Road will get 3 stars from me, as it's just… nice. Nothing more and nothing less. 
there is not really all that much to it, as it's short and sweet but lacks any depth due to its length. Nevertheless, it's interesting to see how much of a character Helene Hanf seemed to be, as she can be fierce and sarcastic in her letters, but also very forthcoming. For example, when she goes on to send the London crew small Christmas packages every year. We as the reader also grow surprisingly fond of the chief buyer of Marks & Co, a man called Frank Dole, as he tries to fulfill Hanf's most obscure wishes. Overall, a nice little read for a rainy afternoon, nothing more and nothing less. Unfair Advantage by Ash, Ali and Hassan Kuba. We all have it, but only a few of us are really making full use of it. I'm speaking of the unfair advantage. This one special talent or gift that sets us apart from others, that gives us a competitive upper hand. Ash Ali and Hassan Cooper are two young British entrepreneurs who framed this concept and tailored this whole book around it. Both immigrated to England when they were younger and coming from a working class background had to work their way up the career ladder. In the end, both became successful businessmen in their own rights. Ash Ali was the first marketing director at Just Eat UK and Hassan Kuba became a self-taught digital entrepreneur and marketing expert, helping businesses to grow and find their competitive upper hands. According to the authors, an unfair advantage is a condition, asset or circumstance that puts you in a favorable business position. We can't easily be copied or bought. Your set of unfair advantages is unique to you, which makes them, well, unfair. The two authors simplify this concept by creating the so-called Miles framework, standing for money, intelligence and insight, location and luck, education and expertise, as well as status. Each and every one of us has at least one of these advantages, often unknowingly so. The book goes on about how to find your advantages and shines light on potential advantages you most likely have not thought about. It gives good examples of what counts as an advantage and how to make use of them. The last third of the book then goes off this beaten path a little bit, as it's more of a handbook for young entrepreneurs on how to find a business idea, find the right people to collaborate with and how to raise money to let your idea come to fruition. Overall, this is a neat little business book worth four stars. It can fall into the trap that many business books fall into. It could have easily been an elaborated blog post, as there is some repetition in here and a bit of fluff to make the chapter seem longer and of more substance than they need to be. The last third is a nice extra, but sort of feels a bit like a different book. Whereas the concept of the unfair advantage applies to almost everyone, the last third feels especially tailored towards startup founders, which probably not every reader can relate to. I'm happy though to have read it fully, as identifying your own unfair advantages is part of a really important process in business and life to get to know yourself. And that applies to everyone. Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This book is unlike anything else I've ever read. It's also one of those books that gets better the less you know about it, so I'll keep my review intentionally vague in terms of its story. Let me tell you this much though. The name of the novel and of its protagonist is derived from Giovanni Battista Piranesi, an Italian classical archaeologist, architect and artist, famous for etchings of fictitious, surreal atmospheric spaces, mainly prisons and classical Roman buildings. He's not really a part of this book, but it's still good to have seen his work beforehand, as author Susanna Clarke openly talked in interviews about her inspiration for her main character and world building. This is the second book she has published so far and it has been 16 years between Piranesi and her first novel, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. This book then is magical in its own way and it can also be read as many things at once. It can be read as a parable, a fable that wants the reader to question morality and human will. It can be read as a fantasy novel, depicting a world unlike anything I've ever come across before. It can also be read as a mystery novel, drawing some very loose parallels to other fictional work of this kind, like the TV show Lost. And it probably gets better and deeper the more often you read it, as there is a good amount of foreshadowing going on, which you won't spot when you're reading it for the first time. I could go on and on, but you can tell that I love this book very much. So of course, Piranesi gets to fall five stars for me. If you're the kind of reader who can let go of our real world, who is open to experience a more metaphorical story, one that's not always grounded in reality, this is a must read for you. As with every new fantastical world, you as the reader have to learn about the rules of the world first, so don't be discouraged if you have no clue of what's going on for the first 10 or so pages. I would love to wipe my memory of Piranesi and start from scratch. I'm jealous of everyone who is experiencing this book for the first time, as it's definitely my favorite book of the year so far. I would love to know what you thought about Piranesi down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my description for links to all the books I've talked about today. And for more book reviews, have a look at this playlist right here. Thank you and see you next time. Ciao.